Welcome back to the Comic Lounge. My name is Ryan, and with me today is one of my favorite artists in comic books, Mike Del Mundo. You know him from so much, so many dope covers he's done. Uh, probably my favorite stuff that you've done is The Weird World and uh, Thor, I would say, off top. Uh, always doing really dope covers, though. Got that hip hop uh, influence in your style, which I love. Uh, it's a huge pleasure to have you on the show, man. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. So I, I always like asking everybody, you know, that I, especially if it's the first time I'm chatting with them, first time on the show, like what started that love for comic books, art, you know, in general, and what in turn, you know, what was your gateway into into comic books as a kid too? Uh, 90s comics, man. Oh, like, yeah. the, the image era, basically, the beginnings of image and, um, you know, like uh, the, the later issues of Uncanny X-Men. X Men was basically like my childhood. As a as a kid, uh, my dad would take us to the store, but we only had like one choice. Like we, you know, he he was really strict with with buying comics and stuff. We didn't have any jobs, so it's like you can only choose one comic. And I'm, beside me, I see this kid with like a stack of like fifty comics, and I'm just like, I hate you, man, <laughs> <laughs> or I envy you. But um, we only have one comic, and then so. I would read the comics in the store as much as I could, but when it came to leave, I would leave with one, and that was Uncanny X Men, X Men, or X Factor, or whatever I could get on those those things. So that's what got me into to comics, like uh, those books um, um, with my favorite artists, like Will Will Spertacho, Jim Lee, Mark Silvestri, you know, all the dudes, uh, right, Tom right. Harlan for sure. Um, and then from there, just learning about where these guys come from, and it gave me a bit of inspiration too. Like Will Spertash is, is a is a Filipino creator, and I'm Filipino, mm -hmm. so that it got me excited because my dad used to always be like, "Hey, that that last name is familiar. It's a Filipino last name." I'm like, "For real? He's like my favorite artist." So discovering that was amazing too, and um, and then yeah, Todd McFarlane, a fellow Canadian, right? So yeah, all of these were huge inspirations. Um, Rob Liefeld. I can't forget about him because he was a huge inspiration. So yeah, that's that's how how far back it goes with comic books. What were your uh, favorite of, of the image books? Is your like you named all the all the founders pretty much? So what were your favorite? Yeah, favorite? Yeah. Uh, okay, let me see. Young Blood is probably like the most um, vivid uh, in my memories, and then all the other books like Wildcats spawn mm -hmm. spawn was huge i read them all savage dragon eric larson um i can keep naming them man. yeah so you were just you were just like full-on image then dude when yeah you were, i was when just taking kid. it in. like that i was like um i don't i guess how old was i geez i'm i don't want to say my age but <laughs> um probably like 10 or 9 or 12. okay so you're not that much older than me all right yeah so i'm i'm 40 yeah so, okay um so just dated back to there and, but probably grade five or something like that and i was taking it all in um i got into comics through a book called toxic avenger from okay. Marvel, marvel's toxic avenger that was my first book i just you know just being a kid in uh at the variety store um on the spin and the spinner racks and i was you know, that's all that we had at, at the time, you know, <laughs> you know, like mm -hmm. iPads or YouTube or anything like that. So these are things that we gravitated towards. And um, I just picked it up. And then um, after Toxic Avenger, I still remember I got uh, Sleepwalker. Like I got it. <laughs> so these are the books that I actually got into. And then when I discovered X-Men at a, at a bookstore, that's when it, you know, that's when I was just like, this, this, this is the shit, man. My first X-Men book was actually, is it, was it, was it Wolverine 50 that I got first? In my, the one, oh, is that the, that's the die cut cover, right? Where he slashed, cover. where he yeah. slashed, it was a Sylvester yeah. issue. Larry Hama, I think was a writer. Yeah, for sure. That was the first Sylvester book I ever, I've ever seen. And that was awesome. But I think my first x books was like X-Factor 67, like from like X-Factor 60 to up okay um, those were awesome it was all the will stuff then uncanny after so yeah and then so like when did you decide when did it become more than just like 
a form of entertainment for you to where you're like, man, you're, you're just like studying it and want, like, wanting to do it. Like, were you self-taught? Like, as an artist, did you go yeah, to school? I think everyone was, I think for the most part, everybody's self-taught, like in comic books. Mm -hmm. um, that's a great story to, uh, to tell because, um, you know, as a, as a kid, I, you know, I told myself as a kid, I was like, yeah, I'm, I want to be a comic artist. I tell my parents, I want to be a comic artist, you know, but that's when you're a child and, you know, things move on. Um, so I had a huge gap of comics during like high school and stuff. I wasn't really drawing a lot. I was more into the breakdance scene, like the hip hop scene. So I was b boy and that was pretty much my life. Um, but they have a lot of parallels and comparisons. So it was kind of natural to just get back into the zone after, you know, after, after a few years, um, just dip to after, pretty much the end of high school. That's when I was like, well, I got to, I got to figure something out. I got to figure out what I want to do. Um, I got to do something like I'm going to college for sure. So I got to, I want to do something that kind of, um, if I'm not going to be boy, I want to do something that kind of is close to that something creative. Like it's, it has, it had to be something creative. So I just put myself into just trying to get into like drawing schools, illustration, graphic design, whatever I could get into. I didn't get, get into any of them. <laughs> I think it, it was due to like bad grades in high school, terrible grades. So I, I, either that or I, I was, I wasn't that good either. I thought I was good, but whatever. Um, so the only thing I got into was the drawing fundamentals at a, at a college called George Brown. And I went there and then I got in and then the only, and then after that, they were like, yo, if you want to, if you want to try to get into other things, you need these drawing fundamentals. You take these, porf this portfolio, then you can kind of try to get into the courses that you really want to get into. So I did that. And then I still didn't get into what I wanted to get into. So the only thing that, the only place that accepted me was the same school was George Brown and it was graphic design and it was a blessing in disguise because most of the things that I do today um I dated back all the way to um the days in college graphic design because there was a lot of conceptual thinking just kind of let you think differently from what you would be thinking if you were to do if you go to school for comics or illustration so it, it was a bit of a blessing because you learned advertising, you learned how to think conceptually, you learned type, how to do like everything like that. And then when it came to get a job, I was I was in it for four or five years. But yeah, anyways, I'm blabbing. And the question was, was I self-taught? So I was self-taught. And the reason why I like got into that, that whole zone of <laughs> my college years is during college, that's where I kind of fell in love with it again because I met up with a lot of friends that were really into comics just trying to break into it you know I was just like reading interviews and I just remember one of the interviews that I read was a Michael Turner interview and um the main thing he said was you know I'm self-taught like there's no there's no school in comic I mean there is but it's you know it's not everywhere right it's not like there's one in where I am in Toronto right. Right. So you pretty much you have to take something else like animation, an animation course or an illustration course, or is there nothing specified? Right. But he was like, yo, like every artist is self-taught in comics. He's like, you teach yourself, you get a job. You just have to be, you just have to work on your craft. I took that with, I, I really took that in was like, oh, that's all you have to do. Like, you don't have to go like, you just have to teach yourself. I could do that. Like I did that with, with, with b-boying which is the same thing it's like there's no schools for for break dancing there's no schools for for any of that we just figured out a way right mm -hmm. so i was i was pretty much set i was like yeah that's easy i'll do that um so that's how the whole self-taught thing came about <laughs> yeah so i'm self-taught <laughs> i mean yeah it's dope. i mean yeah i didn't even i didn't think about it that way like yeah most kids like you start drawing as a kid it's not like you start very rarely would you hear like they started drawing and like they're you know as an adult right like usually like you start when you're young so yeah it's pretty interesting that too that you went the graphic design route because yeah. i definitely think that your graphics like they stand out like you have a very signature unique style yeah. onto your own like there's nobody's art that looks like yours like i instantly it's recognizable which i think that I mean, there's obviously there's a there's a good amount, but I think the vast majority, like 
I want to say basic style, but like there's like a house style with some of the publishers, right? You are f- far, you far broke that mold. And I think that, like I said, with like the hip hop influences, I'm a huge hip hop head. Like I love hip hop. That's like what me and my, my homeboy Dylan, like in high school, that's how we bonded was over hip hop. And then he like, wait, you like comics? And then it was like, that's all we did. Not doing work in class. It was just hip hop and comics all day long, yeah. you know? They're and very, um, they're very similar. They're yeah. Very similar. They do go really well together. And I think that that's what really stands out to me about your style. It's like there's a, like a fluidity to it and like a this certain energy that, that I really dig. Like what, was that something that like you were conscious of, right? Like when you were, when you were drawing, like do you listen to, are you listening to like hip hop and shit? Like when you're, when you're drawing or do you have yeah. like. I mean, not just hip hop. I mean, I listen to whatever, whatever I like. Yeah. Hip hop definitely is is like a big a big uh part of it um but yeah i listen to it i'm not sure if it it uh influences like how i'm drawing or like mm. but what i do do is uh if i am looking for i don't know sometimes when um a song is just something that moves you it can be like the the, the craziest like song that's making you jump jump up and down right you know what i mean mm-hmm. and um but then you're like working on the most like melancholy kind of drawing you know but i think it's just because you just feel good you know like if a song makes you feel good you have (laughs) you're just in a good place so you're drawing that sense like you know like i'll put on um you know i'll I'll, like what what was i listening to recently i was listening to the the clb album right so um it was a a dre track with lil wayne you only live twice Mm -hmm. and it's a crazy it's like just crazy it's a it's a a dope track it's just like insane it's like something that you would like listen to if you're on driving in a car and you're just like cruising you know what i mean just like wilding out but i'm listening to and i'm like you know i'm drawing like flowers and like something more melancholy and more like soothing or whatever but it's just the feeling man that energy that you get and like that's what makes you move i used to listen to a lot of scores to get into really epic um, so my wife does yeah all these paintings are hers behind me that's exactly what she does when she's painting yeah like i used to like when i i still do once in a while if i really need it but like mm-hmm. when i was doing a lot of covers from before just to get that emotion from like even like the the expressions of somebody like how like t- to get that like, that that real expression that like conveys that emotion like i used to listen to like a whole bunch of stuff man anything that would like convey that you know like so movie scores like um I don't know, Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, like the, the, the score for that or the score for like some old 80s flicks, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So anyways, yeah, I d- that's how music influences me in that sense. Yeah. I mean, so now I want to get a little bit into like, how, wh- how did you break in, I guess, like I, for lack of a better way of saying it, like what was like the project that kind of got you in into comic books? The project, um, I, I don't, I didn't have a project, but um, like how I actually landed my job, like how, like the first gig at Marvel. First gig, first gig at Marvel, yeah. Pretty much had just like a portfolio, like actually like, it was like a hard pound um, book that I, I sent, that I uh, showed off in Toronto Fan Expo. Um, I feel like I kind of lucked out a bit because um, they had like a portfolio review and the review is like you kind of have to um you have to send in your portfolio and then they would pick the, the, the portfolios that had some sort of potential um and then they would you know contact those artists to to go for the review the next day or something like that um i went there i think it was a friday night and i was i had my booth there and i just kind of walking around i see the 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 lineup but i was like damn i don't I didn't sign up for this so I was like maybe I'll just I'll try tomorrow or whatever but something just kind of clicked and I was just like you know what I'm just I got my book here I got my like this nice hardcover book that I like bound and everything it looks proper so I'm gonna I'm just gonna try it whatever wing it even if they kind of reject me because I wasn't even supposed to be there so by the time I came back um from my booth um the lineup was was really short and it was like the last two people and kind of just waited there when it was my turn like um dude was 
just you know um kind enough to look through my work i it was cb sibalski which is which i owe a lot to because pretty much you know i've been at marvel because of him um for for all these years doing my favorite favorite books and you know living up the childhood um but yeah he i was just like yo like i just need two minutes of your time because i was just like he looked everyone looked tired there looked like ready to kind of like you know go to bed they've been through like a lot a lot of portfolios so i just they gave me two minutes and it became longer than two minutes it came like they opened the book and they were just like you know eyes wide open you know this is awesome this this looks great and when they started saying these words i was just like holy shit is this like actually happening like do you do you really like it you know what i mean mm -hmm. and he's like oh that one you know that i think you were looking at a pan's labyrinth uh cover um kind of like a concept cover i did and he was just like that's a cover that's a cover and i was like oh this is really happening in my head and you know this is, maybe i was saying it whispering it. <laughs> mm -hmm. but i was like this is really happening so then the book starts getting passed around and then that's when i was just like shit this is really happening cb was actually like yeah like if you want work like i can give you work right now i can give you work right now like i can give you you know you like drawing wolverine and I'm just holy, I'm like, holy shit, like this like is real. Um, in my head, I'm just like, fuck, I, I love Trump. Yeah, it's my one of my favorite characters <laughs> ever. I'm trying to keep my composure and everything, kind of shaking a bit, but uh, I had this huge smile and I was just like, this this is just really happening. Got his card, he told me to like hit him up like in a week or two, and that's how it started, that's man. That's crazy, dude. Yeah. That's nuts. I mean, for the most part, too, like, I know, like, your early stuff is, like, you know, an issue here, right? An issue there, one shot, or stuff like that. Electro, was that the first ongoing? Um, yeah. I think, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was that, there was just, like, you know, two issues here, one issue there. Mm -hmm. Electro was the first ongoing. I think it might be the longest, too, that I've done. <laughs> the longest stint. Yeah. 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 Well, besides, well, Weird World, you also did, I mean, you did two, right? You did the one with Jason Aaron for Secret Wars, and then you did the one with Sam Humphreys. You did six issues of that. So I yeah, think that's so, 11 issues, right? I think, yeah. yeah, 11 issues. I think yeah. Electro was, yeah, I guess Weird World might be the longest. Yeah. Um, in terms of Electra, right? Like, you're choreographing, right? The fight scenes. Mm -hmm. And, like, <laughs> I, I was late to that. Like, I, I had read your other stuff before I got to Electra. I just recently read Electra, like, maybe, like, a month and a half ago. I didn't even know it existed. My friend's like, how do you not know really? about this? Yeah, I didn't even, I just never saw it. I think it might have been, I don't know how I missed it, because, like, I, that's something that I like. Electra, I like the character. Daredevil's, like, one of my favorites. So, like, anything yeah. in that universe of, you know, in that world, yeah. I was blown away, dude. Like, that fucking okay. comic book was so dope. The writing was good, but be honest like it was the art that really like captured it for me um yeah. and that's why my friend recommended it um what when you're doing like that type of book right like choreographing fight scenes and stuff like that and just off the wall insanity like how do you how do you approach a book like that as opposed to like let's say like a book like weird world two very completely different types of sub genres within comic within like superhero comics I don't know like I, I tend to kind of just draw the story based on how the script works so if the script allows me to to go nuts mm -hmm. then I'll go nuts if the script is um doesn't work that way then I won't go nuts because I I, I want to cater to the you know respect the script right right so I'll just do my best to kind of tell the best story possible and with Electra and Hayden I think what happened too is uh Hayden's Hayden um saw um some of the idea like before we even started script like um working like i just got the electra um gig i think i was already like getting super excited and was like yo like i just started drawing like um all sorts of ideas and how we can break down the panels and this and that i don't know i was just I also it was like my first like you said it was my first uh big book i guess that like ongoing book and it was electra and um I was just really excited and just determined and um I really wanted to show off like not maybe not show up but really prove myself because you know like I was new like and I hardly I wasn't like I can count my fingers how many issues I've done of sequentials like I was doing covers I kind of just fell into this and 
and was, was doing covers. So when it started to do sequentials, I was excited, kind of scared. I didn't know what I was doing, learning how to tell stories. So it was all a process. And um, I just tried to do my best. I think one of my main thoughts was like trying to take um, how I, how my cover process and trying to put that into the book. You know what I mean? Like with, with the concepts and the ideas. So that's how um, Electric came about. Um, but yeah, it, it, it did lend to the script because I was doing a lot of these um, passes of like cool ways to do panels and stuff like that. And Hayden got it, you know, I sent it to Hayden and I think he saw that and was like, all right, cool. We could, we can work, work with this, with, with certain things. Right. So yeah, it, it lends, it lends to this. I lend to the script. So some books that you see, like, you know, like I might just do the basic panel layouts just because that's the best way to that it'll work out you don't even want to force like <laughs> force like crazy panel layouts if like if it doesn't lend well so yeah i mean i think hayden blackman too like he works with J. H. williams right there so so he's used to like wacky panel yeah. structure and like the the way stuff is displayed but i, yeah, I, that, I like yeah, that that's too you know what that i i, I totally forgot but that probably was an uh, influence because he was doing the J, um, the stuff with J.H. Williams, the Batwoman stuff, right? Right. And um, I, for sure that, that was an influence. Like, J.H. Williams was a monster. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. um, I'm sure that I was just, I've like, seeing his work, I'm like, yeah, I want to do, like, I kind of want to do something like that where um, something more creative. And I guess because it's Hayden, like, he's already writing that way. Right. It, it worked out, you know? Yeah. I mean, would you say that that was of all the projects? Were you giving them more freedom on that one than some of the other ones, or was some of the stuff like you do with Jason Aaron, like when you got on Thor? I feel like you were kind of like it seemed like you were let loose on Thor for sure. I mean, that shit was yeah, fucking dope. I, think, I think every 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 book I've I've had the freedom to do what I wanted. You know what okay. I mean? Yeah. It's just that sometimes, like when I look at a story, I'm like, well, I can't really break the panel down the way like it's just like a feeling kind of when I read these things it's like what's the best way to tell a story how yeah. does it feel can I do the montage thing in this part can I like can I do some cool metaphor like some stuff where like a bunch of faces are like I did something for I think when I did Avengers um Mark Wade's Avengers I, I did a bit of that like I kind of went out the box a bit but not so much but I just tried to do it where I could so there's like you know certain scenes where Kang is um they're talking about you know the, the whole Kang complex where he, there's like a million Kangs and stuff right mm -hmm. so then I was like oh, okay well I could do something like that where it's just like a bunch of Kangs that that are creating a big Kang like a head Kang right so I I do it where I can yeah but I do love <laughs> going crazy buck wild on that that type of stuff so yeah I mean I think that that's gets me excited yeah yeah, I mean, do comics, like, I mean, they say it all the time, right? Unlimited budget. It's like a movie with an unlimited budget. You can do whatever the yeah. artist has in his head. He can put it down. If he's got the talent, he can yeah. put it on paper, right? And, like, that's that's why I love, I mean, I love film. Don't get me wrong. I love going to movies. But yeah. there's something about comic books that just always, for me, if I have that free moment in the day and yeah. it's like read a comic book or watch a movie, I'm probably going to pick up the comic. You know, like, I'm probably going to, like, get lost in that world. Yeah, and I think no, that... There's no limitations. Yeah, I think that that's that's what's exciting about it. That's what, that's what you, excites me about your art, in, like, specifically. There's somebody like J.H. Williams, right? Like, where you never know what you're going to get. You can get, like, a, a regular panel structure, one page, and flip, and it's just like, you know what the fuck, what's coming at you, you know? Yeah. In terms of, so far, in terms of, like, the ongoing stuff that you've done, I know you've only done brief since on stuff. What, what so far has been like your favorite project or is your favorite project, whatever you did last kind of thing or the mo most recent? So I feel like my favorite project, it's hard to answer that question, but I would say, but the project I did last, I always feel good mm -hmm. about because I'm always constantly trying to get better. Yeah. And so my last project is, I, I would hope <laughs> um, is something better than the project before that. And I, I get excited. Like, um, this recent, like the spawn stuff that I've been doing for Todd, um, that no one's seen yet is like, 
I'm like really excited to show show off because it's something new. Not something new, but definitely not something that looks like the Thor stuff or the weird world stuff. Like I'm constantly just, you know, I, I get excited about something, some new way of rendering or new way of telling, uh, of, of doing the book. And then I kind of move on to that. Mm -hmm. Like this is more, I would say, um, has more like inked, like blacks in it, you know? So it's got more of a defined line and it looks cool, like what I'm doing. And I, and uh, there's a book coming out next week uh, that I did with Scotty. Um, it's a one shot for Strange Academy. And it, it's, it's for the death of Dr. Strange. Death of Dr. Strange um, thing. And um, that, yeah, I can't, I, I want to see what people think of that. Cause um, I was pretty excited about how that looks too. So like, it, yeah, it's always like the last project I would say. Okay. I look back, like I love the projects that I that I've done from the, from back in the days. I love looking back, but I do look back at these things, and I'm just like, I could pick apart, I could pick it apart way more, just because I've kind of, I feel like I've got have had a better eye, I've gotten the, I've gotten better, right? So when you go back to these these, like mm -hmm. I guess you can ask any artist, but when you go back to your old work, it's hard to kind of see, to unsee the mistakes. You know, I get it. Yeah. Um, but the best thing about the old work is that there's a lot, it's pretty raw. Like I would say like the work from, from way from the beginnings, you see the, the rawness of it, like the excitement and the rawness and like, you're just like, Oh, this is, it's a lot of discovery too. Like, especially with Electra, like there's things that I was doing in terms of rendering that I was like, Oh, this is cool. Like this, this cool like angular um, highlight that I that I was working with and I would just do it in certain pages so when you do look back at things because you do change to uh, I do tend to change and get into other things it's almost kind of looking back at it um, with a new set of eyes and seeing a different artist and then you're like damn like what was I thinking of back then you know what I mean like <laughs> what was like what was the thought process you know you forget about it and then it does, you know, you're sometimes I'll look back and be like, oh, I, I think I could use that. Like, I think I could kind of borrow from the old stuff and bring it into the new stuff. So that's pretty that's how I look at my old work and stuff. <laughs> yeah. I mean, do you think that you're like also like the storytelling aspect, yeah. right? Like you said that those, the Electro was your first like sequential storytelling. Yeah. So do you feel like it's become easier? I mean, because you say you're like you were learning, right? Like, like you mostly yeah. do covers. So it, do you it feel has, like it, it just comes to come easier for sure? Definitely. Like I remember when I even was even breaking down the books, um, the first books I was doing, like doing the thumbnails, mm -hmm. it take it take me a lot longer. And now, um, yeah, it's not as long. It doesn't take as long. It's still hard. Like I, I would just say sequential is always going to be hard. Like okay. doing comic pages is never going to be an easy job, um, but it has gotten easier um, from before. Um, and I think that has a lot to do with just getting better. And also um, you, you start building up a library of poses and um, like images and visuals in your head mm -hmm. as you keep doing pages, as you keep going through all these mm -hmm. issues that you've done. And then it becomes a big enough library that when you actually start drawing and doing breakdowns or thumbnails, you have it all in your head and you can try, it just comes out, right? Yeah. It's all ingrained there. And the Electra, you know, that's the beginnings of that. So I was still, you know, building that library. Um, you know, when I first started, I like, you know, you have to, in order to kind of like draw something from your head, you gotta, you gotta uh, draw it for real, right? Like draw the post for real, like get a model or, a model of myself or sometimes use my dad to, to do the models mm -hmm. right so i've used them and uh you know use reference but eventually you get that in your head and then you build up a lot a big enough library that it does get a bit easier in that sense and confidence as well mm -hmm. um, i think uh like the comf the, the more you do books the more confidence you get and the less i feel like now it's like i do less than before like I do less rendering than before right because I know because a lot of it was compensation compensating for certain things or you know um, 
this doesn't look that great. So I'm just going to keep putting stuff on here, like trying to max out like style and this and that. But now I'm like, you get to a point where you, um, you're, you're comfortable and you're in, and you have a lot of confidence that you can just leave that one line there and just be like, I'm good with it. Yeah. And like less second guessing yourself yeah. kind of, right. Yeah. Do you now you do a lot of covers, right? Mm -hmm. What, what, what do you prefer? If you had what to like, prefer? what, if you had to pick one, because I mean, like, you do a lot more covers than you have interior, you know? Oh, uh, so I'm just curious prefer, what man. you have more fun doing. Or is it a different kind of like flexing different kind of muscles? You know what I mean? Like just yeah, doing a singular image. I don't know. I don't know how to answer what do I prefer, but I, I, I can tell you that co covers are a lot easier, <laughs> a lot easier, um, less stressful. Um, cover like doing pages is like, it's just a it's just a laboring job like it's it's a lot of work but it's fun because you're you're telling stories man like you're you're seeing how these visuals like are interacting and it's fun um and also challenging so i like the fact that i like i still want to do co comic pages i mean i want to do the insides of the books because i feel like i'm not even there yet you know i haven't done enough to tell to tell myself that i'm a good storyteller so I I like the challenge of um, of doing of doing the insides of the comic uh, with the covers. Uh, there's still a challenge. Like there's still things I kind of want to try, but I feel like I feel like I've kind of got a knack for it. You know, mm -hmm. so it becomes easy. Um, but the main thing is the fact that when you do covers, you're not worrying too much about consistency there's like all of these little small things that you have to, that goes on in your head when you're creating a book you have to worry about consistency consistency you're solving problems with like panel layouts what works the best how i'm going to tell this story and then you got to color it and then you got to ink it and there's so many things involved right um with a cover that's it's just that one panel of that book right mm -hmm. and you don't have to worry about like all oh, this like does this face look the same as this face? I have this problem of like consistency with my faces and stuff. And I always, I always uh, beat myself up over it. But um, with a cover, like I, I feel like I can just draw, like just say Wolverine, the way Wolverine, the way I want to draw Wolverine. And it works out. I don't have to be like, oh, it has to look like a certain kind of face. Like, I'm just like, I'm just going to draw. Like you just kind of run wild with it. And you don't have to worry about the pressures of doing that. So that's why covers are, are fun in that sense. Mm -hmm. Can I, can I, I, I want to ask to the, the inspiration behind the Doctor Strange and the Miles 10th anniversary cover, the Levitate, Levitate, Levitate. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was a dope fucking cover. That was dope yeah, as fuck. Yeah. yeah, that's a, so I had, I always had that um, in my head that I was like, I want to do a Doctor Strange, just like for, for fun, like a Doctor's just levitating mm -hmm. with his cloak and, um, and like, him listening to like you know like a Kendrick Lamar track right the Levitate the Un Untitled 7 and like um I was like man that'd be cool so I'm gonna do it and I kind of put it off it's just I put off I, I put off my ideas I just write it down I was like I'll do it when I when I have time but then this Miles cover came around and it was a, a variant cover for it was like a Miles variant where people there are different Miles uh morales would be done in different ways mm -hmm. um in different covers different titles and they're like yeah it's a doctor strange title and i'm like oh, i think i could i think i could put that in there you know <laughs> and it works out right so that's how that came about i was like i was pretty excited man because i was like yeah that's cool like it's cool to kind of put that in there um i always find myself like we were already we were just talking about how you know older books you look back at it and you start seeing all the like mistakes and it's hard to kind of enjoy it you know mm -hmm. but the best part of it is too is i put a lot of easter eggs in my book with with things that that work with the story like i'm not just like, putting it in there right they all work with the story but I, I i always look back at those and being like yeah i love i love when that when i was able to do that and i'll lend to the story with like some of my favorite, you know, hip hop lyrics or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's really fun. So 
yeah, that's a cool, cool little Easter egg for that, for that cover. Yeah, that shit was, I mean, my, my boy texted, he's like, dude, did you see that, the window card? I was like, no. And he's yeah. like, it's got Miles on it, and he's fucking got the Kendrick Lamar levitator. I was like, dude. Yeah, he's, got be, he's, he's got to be the K-Doc fan, right? So Yeah. 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 If you want to, I want to ask you because uh, you kind of briefly mentioned it. The you're working on some spawn stuff. I don't know if I can leave that in here or not, or how much you can tell me about it. But I mean, you and Spawn, just that's that's dope as fuck. So I got I got to hear whatever you can share. And I can't really share the story. Are you're doing interiors? It's a pretty, it's a, I can't tell the story because it's a pretty big story. Like okay. it's, it's kind of like a almost like a standalone story. Man, I wish I could share it. Are you doing interiors though? I'm doing interiors. Yeah. Oh I did, fuck I'm yeah! I'm doing four issues. Three issues are done. I just gotta get this, like this last issue. Um, there is a few of what we just what we were talking about with like Electra and like like all the freaking like um freaking the the panels and stuff like that oh yeah so i i did a couple of that because i i really like i mean spawn lends so well to that kind of mm -hmm. um you know with, with what todd did with like the original spawn issues like i remember seeing like looking at them again when i was working at on the on the spawn books and i'm like damn man like these are really good like just the panel layouts and like how he was like telling the story and breaking break breaking the rules in the, in the good way there's a bit of that uh shoot what can i say man there's like there's other there's another character in it that's that's, that's very focused so okay it's not just spawn so how about when can we expect it you don't need to give me too much to use oh, i don't know man um, you don't know okay like it's, is it is it the is it the spawn ongoing though is it in the spawn like main or I'm one not of sure. actually i'm not sure okay so it's All gonna right. be it's gonna be one of those um uh, I think he's just waiting for this issue to get done, and then they're, they're, they'll put. It then he'll stuff. solicit. Okay. Yeah. Oh, dude, I'm so stoked. That is fucking yeah, awesome. I wish news. I could tell you more, man. But, I mean, dude, you just telling me. Period. I. Yeah. It's not even something that would have been on my radar to think about, like you doing yeah. Spawn, but it fits so well. I'm fucking stoked. Another thing that you're you're doing is you're working with Hickman. Yep. So I. Because this Substack stuff, and yeah, this Substack stuff is like completely new, right? Yeah. So, why is my question? Like, why decide to do Substack? I mean, obviously Hickman. I I understand why you're working with him. Yeah. Like that, you don't need to explain that. I mean, he's one of the best writers in comic books. Yeah. But what was the decision to do this? And after you like just you know talk a little bit about that project, uh, I also am curious. Are we going to see it in print as well? For sure. It's, it's like we're all of us, like me, Mike, and um, Jonathan, um, we're all fans of print. So we're, okay. we, we all of us agree that like it's going to it's going to come out in print one way or another. OK, um, how it how it comes out, like I, I have to we'll see. But um, definitely it's going to come on print like we are, we're, we're all talking about, you know, like for sure like because we're doing con conceptual art and all that stuff and it's almost like bringing uh the people into our world and letting them see the process um you know hope like I, hopefully we can we're gonna get like a nice nice kind of dune version of three worlds three moons you know like the jodorowsky's dune <laughs> yeah bible Fuck um yeah. Something like that. Like, that would be exciting. So, yeah, for sure. For sure. Prints, prints on our mind. Yeah. Okay, good. So, can you talk a little bit about the, about the project? Because, I mean, unless you're subscribed to the Substack, you may, like, I know because I follow you. I found yeah. out from yours. I didn't find out. I think I found out from your, your uh, whatever post you shared, okay. um, like, when it was announced. But other than that, like, it's not it's not readily available all the information or all the art like yeah. you have to subscribe so i'm just curious if you could i'm not curious but i was wondering if you could like kind of tell everybody a little bit about the project and kind of you know what they can expect by signing up for that sub stack also um yeah it's uh it's it's gonna be awesome like right now what we've been doing is we've been doing a lot like with like our uh you know our top subscribers like we've just kind of like 
opened up the world to them. So they're able to see live draws and like with me, um, we did a, a live draw with me and um, Jonathan actually, and we're just chiming in and we did that for two hours and um, um, people are able to go in there and, and talk to us and ask questions, things that you, you weren't able to do uh, before. Like this, like we're, and the, and the thing with the live draw is not like we're just, I'm just there drawing live, whatever. I'm actually drawing something that's going to be part of the, the world, right? Mm -hmm. So what we did with uh, Jonathan was we're, during our live draw, we were drawing this deer guy, which is actually part of one of the stories that's coming out. And um, not to get you excited, but we have so like we have like a crazy artist that's gonna be doing that story, um, crazier. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so yeah, I was doing the deer guy, and you're really seeing what we're like. We're, you're seeing what we're like once you once you're able to kind of immerse yourself in this live drawing. You know, thought, you know, once the book is all well and done, and everyone's absorbed it and read it. Whoever saw that lab draw could be like, well, I remember when that character was created, you know? Um, and I, I feel like that's awesome. Like it gives some sort of, uh, some sort of memory to like, to a yeah. part of a book that you have. Like we have, our, we always have these, these great memories of, 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 of our book, but who has had a memory of a book that when they look back and be like, I remember when, when we were actually watching them create it. Yeah, it's pretty dope. So um i think it's it's hard it's a hard concept to grasp because it's a new concept mm -hmm. like i don't know if anyone's done it like in, in the in the vein that we're doing it like we're really like putting ourselves out there and like letting people really see exactly what's happening um and it, it's hard man that live drawing was hard because i'm just like damn man like you know like it's already an hour and a half in and i've only been i've only done like these two sketches and stuff right because you're trying to like um work your brain but yeah. at the same time you're you know you're answering questions so you're multitasking your brain and that that's really hard but hey man like it's it's cool like we came up with some cool stuff and that's something that we'll be doing um we're trying to do it consistently like uh once a week okay right? well that's like a a nice gem to have and then we're also offering um like like there's going to be paywalls too right so certain things that people have subscribed, like our, our top subscribers, they're, they're gonna be seeing things that other people haven't seen. The main things is comics. So when once the comics come out, um, that's when people really get excited. But it's, it's, it's like really early in the stages right now. And uh, so people are just trying to grasp the concept. Um, like you said, it's, it's hard to grasp, right? So yeah, yeah. if you have questions, you let me know and I'll, I can answer them. Cause I- Subsect, it's just weird. It, it's just, to me it's just a weird concept like it, it came out of nowhere right like yeah. all of a sudden all these creators oh we have sub sex we're going to do comics exclusively through them and i yeah. think that anybody that's a fan like me like that loves print our yeah. first like my first instinct was like well fuck is this the only way like and then i'm going to be able to get it because like i'll read digitally if it's the only way i can consume the content but my go-to like I get advances from image sometimes yeah. I won't read them, you know, like yeah. I won't um, read them until I get the print. So it's like listening to that, it's like hearing it's directly yeah, no. from a creator, like, no, like you're getting this, you're getting that. It's yeah. like, I haven't talked to any of the creators that have subsects yet. You're the first creator that I've talked yeah, to. No, I think, so. I think a lot of creators will be offering print. We're all print lovers. There's no, I, I think as much as tech, uh, you know, um, the digital side has, has, has gotten really popular. We're still print lovers. So right. it's going to be both. And I think that um, it's got it. I mean, I, I, I want to see, like, I want to see my stuff in print. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like I want to see things that I, I get excited when I get to hold it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, for sure. It's going to be in print, but when it first starts coming out, it'll be coming out digitally. Right. And once we get a good boatload of things, we'll start collecting it and start putting it out there. Okay. So, like, it'll be released in collective, like, basically like a graphic novel's worth is, is, is kind of what you're thinking. Not single issues on a monthly basis once it's... Yeah, once it's I mean, you're going to have to ask the guys, but... Yeah. Um, right now, what we're doing is um, 
these like short stories. Okay. I really, shoot, I'm sure I even be saying this. I guess, I guess I could say it like they're, they're, ex- it's, it's amazing because they're explaining the world, mm-hmm. right? Like you have a short story about, you know, a toothbrush or maybe not a toothbrush, <laughs> but um, just as an example, like, uh, just say there's like a cool kind of technology that, you know, that uh, is able to, to power up these guns in a certain kind of world. And um, we were telling the story of how that, how that creation started. Okay. The guns, right. So just say like, you're seeing a movie and these guns are already like, you know, these people are just firing these guns, but you don't know any backstory towards that small part of the universe or that mm-hmm. small part of it. So we're breaking it down. So when you actually come into our world, you know about the small things of that world. That's so right. So you we're breaking it down in that sense. Um, instead of like you experiencing that into like this one story that's, okay. that's happening, right? So yeah, that's it, it's confusing, but it's okay. gonna when I, I I really feel like uh once things start to move, like it's and everyone sees it as as the whole that it is they're gonna like backtrack and be like man that that was crazy you know like it's something new for sure i mean i'm fucking stoked for it yeah i can't wait i I, one more question about it too before we move hickman what's it like working with him are there a lot of a lot of charts a lot of diagrams you know like (laughs) like, because i mean all his comics i mean the x-men something he's been doing i mean dude there's pages of charts there's pages of text yeah he's he's, he's fleshes stuff out yeah he's see that's what i'm saying so like no think about think about that right and Mm -hmm. think about what he think about what he did with x-men and then you've seen some of the charts on i don't know if you're following the Substack, but you know there's like a post with like a huge rock and he free and he breaks down the rock like it's just a rock but he breaks it down and so just, you know he already has this intention of what it's what's gonna ha- what happen with this rock right mm-hmm. so we're he's breaking it down to the minuscules and um and that's how we that's how we think so imagine how you know once we see once you see jonathan's world as a whole people are gonna be like you know people are gonna go nuts once they see it right so it's it's a process right now okay. But yeah, yeah, there's there's lots of diagrams and stuff. For sure. <laughs> very yeah. impressive, very impressive, man. Yeah, I mean, just like the work that he puts into his comics, it's it's very planned out. Yeah, it's insane. Like, there's nothing that he doesn't think about. Like, that's why I think, like, when people ask him questions about, you know, this new X Men stuff, he had answers immediately because he already fucking thought of ev- almost every answer that somebody yeah. could have asked it's 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 mind-blowing it's fun, to man. think about it's, it's really fun um yeah it's hella fun right now what we're doing like me mike and jonathan are like when we're creating this world it's just super fun because and there hasn't been any sort of like nah don't do that don't do this it's more of like what do you think of this yeah that looks cool you know what we can like you can take that and do this with that and i'm like that's freaking cool too so that's how we're working and and we're just building stories in that way right um i'm not sure if you saw some of the examples of the art that we've been conceptualizing but there's one of the father and his spacesuit and it started off with mike's um concept spacesuit concept and then we needed uh, a different look when he's on the moon so I took his space suit concept and kind of added to it and then was like, well, he's not breathing on this moon or whatever. So he needs something to breathe with. And that was like kind of the description that Jonathan had. And um, uh, I was like, well, what if we put like a tree that of his veins that kind of grow out of him that's allowing him to take in oxygen or whatever? Right. And then it kind of keeps going from there. And then Jonathan has this idea, man, I'm spewing like spoilers, but that's another thing too, is like the, there's, there's small little spoilers there. Cause you're seeing the process as well. Yeah. But it's been so fun in that sense that we are creating these characters and telling the stories of these queer characters. And I think, um, and then Mike, 
Mike will do something and I'll be like, that's really cool. Like, and I'll see some of his designs, I'll be inspired by it. And we're just kind of just bouncing off each other. So I've never experienced that. Like, you know, it kind of feels like being a kid again. Um, so during the image days, like when I was growing up reading all those cool comics and just getting excited and going on, you know, my piece of paper and just drawing some cool character I created, right? Yeah. It feels like that again. That's awesome, bro. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, I'm super stoked to, to see if like the finished product. I mean, it, I think that like just hearing you talk about like what you get with the subsec, like really like where you almost feel like you're a part of the process, right? Like, cause you're yeah. seeing with you guys, like that's, a, that's an experience that, I mean, I've never seen. So like, I, like that to me is very intriguing. It makes me like, want to like be a part yeah. of I'm sure other people, you know, I really feel like, really a part of the process of, of creating the world is not just, you know, taking a description and doing whatever yeah. the description says. It was like, well, it's a, it's a small little description and it's just like, you know, Jonathan just lets us go wild with it. Like, you know, he was like, that's just like kind of a, a brief description. Just do what you, you know, do what you think works. And then we just start telling our own stories. And then, um, then he takes that and he sees what works and what doesn't. Most of the time, he doesn't say much. He didn't. He hasn't really said much. So it's it's been great. It's like it's it's more just adding to it. But the best part of it is, you know, when the, you know, just seeing, seeing, uh, me and Mike were talking about. We're like, you know, what's going to be really cool is like seeing our concepts drawn out by you know our favorite artists, mm -hmm. and that's what's cool. Like you know. We don't get to do a lot of uh, character designs and stuff like that for Marvel. I don't. So this is something new. And I always get excited when like, you know, my like a small little design I did in Marvel um, gets put in like another book and someone's drawing it. It's like, that's, I don't know. Just, yeah. I find it really cool. Yeah. yeah, no, that's fucking dope as shit. So I do want to like another thing I, I was kind of curious, um, moving more towards like just your art. What, what is your uh, preferred method? Like, do you, is it strictly digital? Do you do traditional or a little bit of both? When I'm doing like this, uh, like the comic work, a lot mm -hmm. of it is digital. Like, I mean, the end result's gonna be digital. Right. Um, a lot of my thumbnails are traditional. I like just going on my sketchbook and hashing it out, like just drawing, um, not thinking too much, just letting, my, letting the pen go and letting ideas come that way. So I, a lot of my thumbnails, sketches, ideas are in my sketchbook. So, so the traditional part of that is, is there because it's timing and stuff. Like I just, digital is just so much faster. I'm so used to it. So um, I could start off traditionally. Um, a lot of times I'm just like, or right, I'm just gonna take a picture of this it's, and, and put it into Photoshop and just finish it off. <laughs> so, yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing like, I do a lot of traditional drawing, um, just not as much um, on the comic side. It's just like, I still have a sketchbook and I'm sketching all day. And then in terms of, uh, in terms of music you're listening to, when, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, some music wrecks. What, what are you listening to as yeah. of like, like, yeah, right now with what you've been drawing recently? Oh man, shoot, okay. Let me like pop it up and see. <laughs> There's this like Statue of Limitations EP that I've listened to. It's like with Smoke Dizza and Benny the Butcher, and it's like the it's a, it's fully produced by Peter Rock. And there's like a few bangers in there that like I really like. So that's I've been putting that up. Mad Lib is always um, in the list. Mm -hmm. Dilla, like Dilla and Mad Lib are like it's like if I'm trying to find something to listen to, like those those guys come around as like you know you're not going to lose if you put uh, uh, as well as like the Frank Ocean Blonde album. I put that on a lot like that. That's actually, I don't know. That album probably is like the most played album I have. Um, I play, I play it a lot. Like when I'm drawing, when I'm, you know, if I can't find like, you know, sometimes there's like a dry spell of music. If I can't find something, I'll put on um, the Frank Ocean Blonde album. Okay. Um, as well as like Lauren Hill, you know, message Ed education at Lauren Hill. Oh, it's a great um, album. They kind of have like the same kind of comparisons. But right now, there's knowledge, really into knowledge. 
Um, I was just listening to the old uh, 93 Till Infinity. Donda for sure. Love Donda. I've been checking for the like the CLB, like Drake CLB. But yeah, it's all over the place, man. There's just so many, so many things. Um, you know, the Griselda dudes, like West Side Guns, like new album. Yeah, I mean, what are you checking for? Oh, I'm just, I, I just love hearing what, what, uh, what artists listen to when they're drawing, you know what I mean? Like, I, I listen, I mostly listen to old shit, you know, for the most part. A lot of, like, Atmosphere, uh, yeah, Living yeah. Legends. Yeah. Um, oh, man, yeah, so that's, like... That's, that's my like shit, 90, you know? 96, 97. Yeah, People Under the Stairs. People, yeah. uh, you know, I got, right now, I've been listening to uh, that, a lot of Tribe Called Quest, Gangstar. Yeah, try just old stuff. You know, I just I for some reason like I'll try to listen to some of the newer stuff, but then I always end up putting on an old album. Yeah, just, yeah, I go back like a, and forth. No, yeah. good. The good thing is nowadays they have like some new, new, new stuff that sounds like old stuff. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's like the beauty of like Spotify and like Pandora and stuff. You throw on like a station, and then like I've discovered a lot of dope shit from that. Yeah, Spotify is really good with their algos. Like it's like. They, they really know you. It's weird. Yeah, well, it is weird. Both you know. albums, I'm just like, um, you know, on Instagram, like I get an ad and I'm like, I'm not really into that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. You think I am. <laughs> but <laughs> but with, uh, with Spotify, like, you're like, oh, you, you know, kind of like what I want to listen to. And it's mm -hmm. like these new artists and you just kind of puts you in this like rabbit hole of, of, of really cool shit. Yeah, just like I go all over the place. But I think... What about, like, what was I listening to today? Uh, the CLB album. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's so funny, man. There's so much music out there. Oh, I know. It's like a million, like so much music, but then it's like, I kind of go for like, you know, the main, the main, uh, the main tracks that are already, right? Like the. Well, getting back to comics, um, besides what you, you know, you got the Substack book, you got the Spawn stuff that you, that you, that you, uh, that you told me about is there any other things in the work any other covers um that you can uh talk about right now i've been doing a lot of boom like working on a lot of boom covers um i signed i signed with boom with um to do uh with a cover deal mm -hmm. so there's a lot of stuff coming out um on that end i did something for uh that that people haven't seen is probably like like a berserker album uh a berserker cover um, just doing a lot of stuff for Boom. Okay. Um, cover wise, let's see what else. Man, I'm I'm doing something cool for a, a pretty a really cool book, but I don't know if I can say it because they haven't said anything. Okay. The book hasn't come out either. Is it a brand new book that's coming out? No, no. It's 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 a it's a book from Image that's been around, and a it's a pretty big book. And okay it's it's knee deep it's already it's, it's been around forever and it's a po very popular book good book um and it's on image so i don't know if you can do your, okay i'll do my homework or, yeah i'll do my homework but um i i can't say right now because i don't think they they've they've said anything yet okay um what else really just the substack stuff right now okay and, uh, yeah i just finished up the strange academy that's right Dr. strange one shot and that's that's you know look out for that that's next that's coming out next week um pr i'm pretty happy about that and like being i'm stoked for it yeah being able to collaborate with scotty young which is like one of my heroes from you know what i mean like big inspiration um he's also a great cover artist yeah he's and dope his, his he's, way his... of thinking is insane as well like sometimes i see those covers i'm just like man how do you th i want like i wish i thought of that kind of thing you know mm -hmm. so that was awesome to collaborate with yeah, I'm definitely stoked for that, dude. And uh, definitely can't wait for the Substack stuff in print. Definitely going to keep an eye out, you know, like subscribe to the Substack as well. And the Spawn stuff, I cannot wait to see. Um, yeah, I can't wait for people to see it. Like, it's been a while since I've done something like ongoing. Not ongoing, but like even just like a, a mini series kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And it's childhood, man. Like when I, like it, I had a lot of fun with the, with the Spawn stuff just because it really brought me back to that and um working on like you know electra and like the avengers was amazing because i grew up with that too mm -hmm. but not as much as like 
you know, Spawn or Uncanny X-Men, Cracks Men, those things like really hit hit me in the heart, man. So um yeah, that it it it's uh it's a big childhood thing with the spawn stuff that's coming out. Yeah, it's, it's fucking dope. I, I still like I'm blown away. I can't wait to see those fucking pages. So I I can't wait for it. I'm happy for you to that you got a chance to do something like that. That's you know like from your childhood. And thank you again, you know, so much for uh taking time to chat with me, dude. It's been a fucking blast. I'm so glad we could uh finally get together and chat. Yeah, um, for sure, man. But um, before, thanks for having me, man. It's um it's always it's it's nice to talk and like you know, I always pick up on uh on things that you know, I've answered. I'm like, I never really thought about it that way kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So it's always good to pick those things up in these interviews. Oh, yeah. And, you know, before I let you go, though, um, for everybody listening and watching, um, can you share where they can find you online, the Substack stuff as well? And I'll drop all those links. Um, yeah, in the comments check out um, Three Worlds. Uh, not, well, it's Three Worlds, Three Moons, which mm -hmm. is the which is the, the story. And um you can get that at 3w3m.substack.com. Um, check it out, man. Like, come and support. It's going to be great. Like, it's, you're going to see, like, uh, a product of just ultimate freedom. Well, I want to say freedom, but ultimate creation. You know what I mean? Like, like you're going to see a lot of fun. It's just fun. And um, a lot of, like, fun. You get, you get great stories out of fun. So um check that out and, and and support for real support um you can check me out at deadly mike which is my instagram and my twitter mm -hmm. and www.mike if you're looking for you know any kind of merch the store is there um it's nothing for sale now but there's going to be a couple prints coming out um in a few and uh you can also you know hit me up there too if you want if you have any questions you know all right. Hell yeah, dude. So I'll drop those links down below for you. And uh, again, thank you so much. And I definitely, definitely want to do this with you again sometime in the future if you're up for it. No, for sure, man. Anytime. Just, just make me. We're good. All right. Thanks. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate it.